It's not just Sears and Victoria's Secrets that rely heavily on catalogs. Lightroom is actually built on what they call a catalog. Today on the Lightroom Whisperer, I'm going to show you exactly what Lightroom's catalog is, where it is, and how on a basic fundamental level Lightroom works. By the end of this video, you should have a much better understanding of how you can use this program to your advantage. Let's get right to it. This is going to give you a better understanding of the foundation of Lightroom and how it works. And because of that, you're going to be able to explore more through Lightroom and know what the heck you're doing. So before we even get started, let's talk about a brief history of the program itself. Lightroom started more as a program for file management than anything else. And to this day, it's still important to remember that because it is still file management software. When it comes to editing, back in the day of the beginning of digital photography, and even before that, you had Photoshop. Adobe Photoshop really was the preeminent editing software used by almost everybody. The problem being, the cameras as they evolved started to take pictures known as RAW files. These RAW files can't be opened by Photoshop. You have to have a file like a JPEG or a TIFF that Photoshop can recognize. So Adobe had created a program called ACR, or Adobe Camera Raw. ACR, when you try to open a RAW file, opens up and then allows you to do minor things like uh, change the white balance, change your exposure. Back in the day, they used to say brightness, but now you can change the highlights and whites and blacks. All these little things that you have more abilities with a RAW file to do than you would with a JPEG. Now, once you're done in ACR, once you've done these minor basic adjustments, you then would click an open button and it would bring it into Photoshop for you to do the remaining editing. Now, when you're done in Photoshop, you would save a new copy of it, which takes up a lot more space on your hard drive, especially over time as these start to build up. Now, the thing that Lightroom did is it took that ACR program and another program that Adobe made called Bridge and merged them together. Adobe Bridge was how you would organize your photos. And then when you wanted to start to work on it, if it was a RAW, it would launch it into ACR. And then from ACR, you could go into Photoshop and then you could save it in Photoshop. That was really everything put together now in Lightroom. Now over the years, Lightroom has evolved quite a bit. Unless I need to go in for multiple layers or to put text or something like that over something in Photoshop, Lightroom is pretty much all that I use to edit. Now that being said, I start my workflow with organization. I have a video on workflow that will give you a much better idea of how to create a habit so down the road you can find things much more easily in Lightroom. That's a whole different topic though. In this case we're talking about Lightroom and how it works. And the thing to wrap your mind around more than anything with that is it works with something that they call a catalog. Now the easiest thing to think about for an equivalent is do you remember in a library, if you're old enough, there's something called a card catalog that you would go to to try to find a book. Now, the card catalog doesn't contain any books. It just has information about the author, the name of the book, uh, probably a brief description of that book, and then where it lives in the stacks, the actual bookshelves within the library. The catalog in Lightroom is the same thing. Like a card catalog in a library, the catalog in Lightroom doesn't contain any pictures. It just contains information about that picture and also where the picture actually lives. Now myself, I don't keep my pictures in the same place that I keep my catalog. I keep my catalog on my laptop. Now for me, that's my only computer. So if I'm traveling, I have my pictures or at least my catalog with me. When I get back home, my actual pictures live on external hard drives. I travel with a smaller drive and then I transfer those images while I'm traveling to those what I call my working drives. Now in this case, my actual physical pictures might be halfway around the world when I'm teaching a workshop, but I can still pull up information about it. Like that card catalog in the library, Lightroom's catalog is more or less its brain. It keeps a lot of information including little thumbnails, little previews. Now, if I go into my Finder, which on a PC is going to be known as like your browser or your Explorer, and look in my Pictures folder, that's where Lightroom, when you download it initially, is going to put this unless you tell it otherwise. You'll find a folder called Lightroom, and then in there you'll find this, this file that looks a little different, and it says .lrcat, which stands for Lightroom Catalog. 
This one is actually the brain of Lightroom. Now these other ones, the, if you click on them, they'll actually have similar names to it. These are your preview files or different sidecar files that Lightroom will use for bits of information. So if I go to like my previews file, this is actually what contains all the little thumbnails that Lightroom was remembering. When I go and open my program and I'm in, let's say, Norway, it can still show me thumbnails for every picture, but I can't access the full file because it might be back home. But because these files, my catalog and the preview files live with my laptop, I can see all of that still. Now let's open the program itself. Now you can see when I open this up that on the left hand side it's giving me information about my catalog. It's telling me that in my catalog I have 67,530 photographs currently. You can see right here that there's quite a few that we're looking at in little thumbnails. And I have a Macintosh hard drive that it can recognize and you can see that it's bright. There's a little green dash over here. It's actually telling me how much room is remaining on the hard drive and how big the overall hard drive is. This is an active drive. Lightroom sees it, it knows there's pictures in its memory from this drive, and it's keeping track of those. Now, you remember I had mentioned, though, that I keep most of my pictures on what I call my working drives, drives back home. So if I go and I see Genius Drive and GUnit are grayed out, that means that Lightroom can't see them currently. In this case, they're not plugged in. That also, though, might mean that uh, you might have changed the name of those drives outside of Lightroom. And when you go back to try to find them, it's looking for this specific name and it can't find it. So it's going to look like it's not there. Now, before I plug them in, I just want to open one of these and show you the. there's a question mark also. I keep all of my files in date order. When you watch my workflow video, you'll see more about why I do that. But this is telling me that there's a file folder missing. And if, let's say, they were plugged in and I had changed the name, I can now right-click on there and tell it to find that missing folder. Similarly, there are little exclamation points next to my pictures right now, and that's telling me that the photo is missing. If I was to click on that and my hard drive was plugged in, I could then tell it to locate the file, and I can direct it to where the file lives. Once Lightroom knows its, let's say, address, its new address, it'll come all back together. Your edits, your keywords, your ratings, all of that are associated with the file's name and the metadata, the information about that file. And that's what the catalog is keeping track of for you. Now, if I actually try to go into the develop module with a file that I don't have with me, it's going to tell me the file could not be found. And that's because my hard drive currently is not plugged in. Now, also, the catalog is keeping a lot of information with this, even though the file is not here. So if I go into a picture, I can look up a little bit more. I can see that I have a four-star rating on it. The catalog's remembering I did that to it. If I go into my keywords, I can see the keywords that I've applied to it. So the catalog's what's keeping all of that associated with the file. When I plug in this hard drive, I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. As soon as the hard drive is recognized by the computer, you see the icons show up on the desktop, Lightroom will be able to see them. Once that happens, you'll notice that all of the little question marks are going to disappear, our exclamation points disappear, and I have full access to these files. Now if I go into the develop module, I can do anything I want with it. It's not going to block me out. Now let's just head back into the library for a minute and take a look and see my GUnit drive here. You can see that I've got file folders that are named everything from 2005 through 2016 and some other kind of miscellaneously named ones. If I actually go down to my finder and open up my GUnit drive, we can look on here in the folder that I have named Lightroom Imports where I store all these, and you can see that it has the same names. Even the miscellaneous ones, for the most part, are in there. Now, there are ones that client images, client picks for transfer, you don't see over here in the GUnit drive listing on Lightroom. That's because Lightroom's catalog doesn't know those files exist. The only thing Lightroom sees are the ones that I've told it to, the ones that I've imported to its catalog. So in this case, the majority of these in this Lightroom imports folder are visible to this catalog, and that's what it's keeping track of for me. If I was to go in and change a name of one of these, when I restart Lightroom, I'm going to see one of those question marks. It's not going to know what happened to this file because I changed the name outside of Lightroom. 
Now, if I actually wanted to change the name of that, I could actually go over, right click, and then I could actually tell it to rename this file. If I do it through Lightroom, it'll change it actually in that same G-Unit drive that you saw in the Lightroom Imports folder, but Lightroom will keep track of the name change and it will make sure that those question marks don't occur. Now, I didn't actually want to do that, so I'm just going to hit Cancel here. That way I keep it named 2005 and it keeps to my naming hierarchy. Now, a major advantage to this program and the way that it operates using this catalog is when you're editing. This program differs from other ones, including Photoshop, because it does something called lossless editing. Now, when you normally would go into Photoshop and open up a file, and then you would save that file, uh, let's say you'd want to change something down the road, and you open it again, and then you resave that file, and then something else happens, you want to maybe uh, crop it a little differently, and you open that, and then you resave that file, it ends up losing quality each time. Now, with lossless editing, it's not actually editing the picture. When we actually go into the Develop module, we can do that right now. Let's grab a picture at random here and go to Develop. We can move sliders all day long. We can change all sorts of different things in here. And it's never actually editing the photograph right now. All of these adjustments are being kept track of on a history list. If I open this panel over here, you can see all of these things I've done. And if you look above at that little window, they call that the navigator. As I hover over the different stages of development below that I just did, it'll show me a preview. At any point, I can go back to any of these. This is known as lossless editing because it's not editing the file. It's keeping track in the catalog of what's going on. Now, if I want to take a picture that I've done editing to, maybe I've applied keywords to it, and I want to put this on the internet. Uh, maybe I want to put it on Instagram or upload it to Facebook or maybe I want to even email it to people. I have to do something called exporting that file. I have a whole other video on exporting that will be coming up in a couple weeks. And if you make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell, it'll end up letting you know when that comes out so you don't miss it. Exporting, though, is what's baking in all of those adjustments. So if I liked the way this picture ends up looking, I don't right now. Let's change maybe one or two more things here. Much better. I can export this file when I'm back in my library module. The file I just exported is a copy of the original file with all of those different edits baked into it. My original file is still sitting there just like it came off of my camera. The only thing that shows any kind of edits is back in that catalog, Lightroom's brain. It's keeping track of all of that stuff for me. Now that's really about it when it comes to the foundation of Lightroom, how it actually works. The main thing to remember is it revolves around that catalog. It is no coincidence that they call it a catalog. It's just like the card catalog in a library. It doesn't contain any pictures, but it does have the information about where that picture lives. In my case, on my working drives, my Genius and my G-Unit drive. And then it also contains information about the file. It might be the keywords you've applied to it. It might be the edits you've done to it. But the catalog is what's keeping track of all of that for you. So as long as you remember to start a workflow, keep up the habit of that workflow, rating your files, keywording your files, down the road in 10 years, this program makes it exceptionally easy to go back and find those pictures. And if you've done uh, an edit that is too extreme, you can always reset it back to the first state that that picture came out of the camera. You've never lost the original quality. And that's one thing that lets this program differ from anything else. So try to use it a little bit more to its full advantage. Make sure you're using it for the organization. Make sure you're using it for the editing. And altogether, it keeps everything under one umbrella for you to make it easier in the long run. This is the Lightroom Whisperer saying, keep Lightrooming.